G'day everyone, it's SCS Supercoach, for buying Supercoach content boys, I'm here to present the round 13 review, uh, not too happy about the side to be brutally honest, and uh, don't mind me, I am currently in my work clothes because as we all know after a long weekend, uh, waking up waking up the next day for work after a long weekend, uh, your body clock's a mess, so I've had a share, I've gotten changed, I'm ready to go, I, I will be waking up as late as possible as need be to get up for work. So I'm all sorted. Just saying, clean my teeth on me out the door. Anyway, that's a tangent. Um, Yeah, I'm not feeling too good. And uh, the realisation of not having much money to work with is really kicking in. Um, This is the first time we've gone down in rank since round seven. So that's a positive, but not too much else to be positive about. We scored 1,864 uh, and we have 11 trades remaining and uh, five league wins somehow this week. I thought we were terrible this week, as it says. And we went down 833 spots and our season rank now is 8,766. Um, yeah, I'm not feeling too pleased about my side. Bit frustrated, uh, sick of these fake primos in my fucking team. So let's just go through it. Um, Nick Dacos got tagged. Um, he copped it. He copped a cork on the shin, and got subbed out with ten minutes to go. So, bit a bit of primo carnage in the last game. But um, yeah, if you went captain, pretty stiff. Um, if you didn't see the news about uh Neil Bullen tagging. Um, but yeah, I, I, I to be honest, I just preferred Max the whole way. Um, as captain anyway, so that didn't really change much. Um. Shea's a 129. Fantastic the way he's playing the midfield over the past few weeks. So he's been tremendous. Uh, Sam Closey, 48. Um, this was just a massive mistake keeping him. I was sort of thinking in my head, like, it's just a 70 break even. He's he's hit it more times than not. He's hit he's and against St. Kilda, the th- theory was he'd score a right against St. Kilda, but no, nah, he's just cooked. I don't really know what's going on with him. Is he getting tired? Like, um, like the role hasn't changed at all. Why is he just dropping in absolute stinkers? I think he just needs a rest. I think this is the first season at AFL level for him. So I know he's mature age, but uh, I think uh, playing all this uh, league footy is starting to catch up with him. Uh, but he's got the buy this week, but don't really care. I'm trading him out. Uh, thank you for being a good rookie. I felt like you could have been a lot better than you were though, closey. Uh, Graham, uh, 64, very solid. He was on like 35 at three quarter time. Then this is one positive. Uh, yeah, Graham, I thought was really good. I don't think he even went down that much this week. How much did he go down? My face is in the way. 1.4k, big deal. Um, I'm probably keeping him, um, and probably trading him out round 16. Uh, Marty Hall, uh, didn't play. He was, he's injured. Dawson, um, I'm not too angry at this because, well, first off, that day, um, Hawthorne won and we're back up and about, so I'm super thrilled with that. I'll tell you, I love Supercoach, but I'll tell you what, I would rather me go crap at Supercoach than uh, Hawthorne have a bad season. If Hawthorne are up and about, uh, Supercoach, you know, it's not as bad of a feeling having a pretty disappointing side. So I'm just glad the Hawks are back up and about. But uh, I'm not going to get too frustrated because my plan anyway with Dawson was for him to be a defender forward loop. So I'm not I'm not going to get frustrated about that. It's just pure unluck. So um, yeah, we move on. I mean, this will he probably won't play another game for the year. Would be my guess. Uh, Ryan and Young with their buys. Bontempelli 99, very inconsistent this year. Um, if he didn't start him, it would have been a good play. Uh, most of the preseason, I was pretty hell bent on not starting him due to that high price, but I still did. But he's still been pretty fantastic this year, so too hard. So it's a bit hard to knock him. Dawson not playing at one hundred percent, one seventeen. This could have been bigger. Like this is Richmond, but he was. I think he is playing a bit hurt, which is frustrating. But uh, once again, can't do much about that. He's been he's been fully healthy most of his career, so. Uh, stuff like that can happen here and there. Just hope. Um, I just think the buy can't come soon enough for Adelaide at the minute. So, um, yeah, 
I think that's I think that's where he's looking forward to, and hopefully Adelaide can race it, and hopefully Dawson can be uh, a reliable player for the rest of the year. I did ah oh, sorry, my bad. I didn't go over my trade. Silly me. Um, history. So I'm going to talk about uh my main highlight of the week by far, and that is trading in Errol Goulden. Brought in Will Dawson, got rid of Rogers and Wilson at the end. I think I did say I was going to get rid of Garcia, but I don't know. Um, the lower break even with Garcia, just in case he did come back into the side, uh, held me to keep him. But um, anyway, who cares about Garcia at the minute? Let's talk about this man, Errol Gould. Fantastic. I know he plays wing. I know he doesn't, and I know that he doesn't get many CBAs, but the way he pushes up into the contest, it's almost like he... It's not being counted as a stat, but he is leading up into stoppages and plays like like that way. There's going to be ups and downs, blah, 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 with Gordon. But um, with just how unreliable the midfielders are at the minute, I'm just happy to have him. And he's sort of a guy where I can – he can be a guy where he can spike my rank. So that's sort of a guy I was sort of targeting. So um, very happy with Gordon, very happy with the trading at 530k. Those are the type of the guys that I need to target. So I'm um, very happy for him to reward me this week. Um, let's talk about the three stooges right here. They are driving me up the wall. Sam Walsh. Um is it time to question whether the back's concerning him? I knew I shouldn't have done this. This was stupid. I I never, I very rarely target players after a limited preseason unless they're unless it's value. It's not value. It's nearly six hundred k, and I've paid for this bloke. Uh so he's just delivered me. He hasn't even had a score above one twenty. It's just been crap. So I knew I should have stuck to my gun and not gone with him. Like I, I paid an extra thirty k for will dawson uh sorry uh jordan dawson the next week when that should have been dawson instead and get, saving yourself 30k and being against this bloke um and have merit instead but whatever Raul, um i'm worried that uh his hot streak is now done and he is now just really sort of fading here um he's had two tons since round eight um, that really, with no tag, that really should be a performance where he's dominating. One thing I will say though, is that, uh, there weren't many goals in the game. So you can maybe say that where there just wasn't many set of bounces, but I don't care. This is crap. 82, not good enough. Um, and yeah, I don't have merit. So that's an L, uh, Tom Green, 79. Um, is there, I don't think we can defend this bloke anymore. I really don't think we can defend this bloke anymore. Seriously, what is going on with Tom Green? One thing I will say, at least, I mean, at least he's lowering his price for uh, next year, but I literally don't know what's going on. He's had he's had three tons since entering my side. Now, this is purely my fault, I know. I know, I um, got too nervous about the um, ownership here, and it's just, yeah, killed me. A 109, 159... 116 he's given me i brought him in round four I, I feel like i've brought this up every week and i just i'm just going to get even more pissed off thinking about it so but you guys know the whole situation i paid 650 for tom green and um and i traded out five that week so that in itself has cost cost me about 300k um all up that that's season killer right there and that's uh, a lot of the reason as to why I'm not doing as well this year. Sullivan, 48, disappointing, but that's all right. Um, a call off sub. He scored 32 in 10 minutes off just fine. That's so impressive. So, Richmond, can you please play this bloke um, and stop playing some of these dribblers you've got in your side? So, um, yeah, get McCall for a better run. I think he's uh, a good boy to build around. I think they've got a good bloke in him. So, uh, hopefully, uh, I mean, I don't. I don't I don't like saying hope and injury in the same sentence, but um it does seem like Prestia will miss this week against Hawthorne. So I know Martin's to come back in, but hopefully that means McAuliffe has done enough to not be sub and 
they should give him a better run here. Butters, Sarong with the bike. Garcia didn't play because Ross Lyon hates kids. Uh, Max Gorn, uh, 132. Uh, so it was between him and Dacos. Not really. I was always pretty keen on Gorn. Uh, so 132, I'm fine with that. I mean, as I say, it's just so important nailing a captain every week. So if you can do that, I think my worst captain score of the year has been 109. And that was from Gorn as well. But... I don't know. I just thought it'd be a good matchup for Gorn. Something to prove a bit. English, 88. <laughs> I can't stand this bloke. I'm I'm on George here. Um, I'm now starting to get, get yeah. He's just, he's just, he's just crap. He's just total crap, Tim English. Um, uncompetitive. Walks everywhere doesn't even seem interested in trying to play the game. Like it's just really baffling. I brought him in at six sixteen, and just, yeah, nightmare. I, I want Grundy back. I've done so many ruck trades this year. And, they, and this goes back to theory. Um, If you've got, if you go set and forget rucks, don't, muck around with it i know grundy was looking crap but i'm sure in my head at the time there's just better stuff to do than be trading out uh rucks like we just got to remember the preseason history with Brody grundy because he is probably r2 this year and i traded him out um um we gotta we gotta just remember to Back in our preseason history, that sort of thing. What's the reason why we're picking them? And there were no red flags with Grundy. Sure, he started off a bit slow, but yeah, nah. And now I've, yeah, I used about three or four ruck trades, and that got me to Tim English, who is much worse. Uh, Livingston, you're the goat, but you had the buy. Uh, sorry, you didn't have the buy, but you've got the buy coming up. Flanders 152, fantastic against that Saints uh, back line. And certainly Dane Zorko will be a guy that we'll be targeting in our vice-captain loophole for the week, probably. Um, yeah, so 152, very good from Flanders. Um, easily his highest score of the year. He's been Mr. Consistent, and it, it's nice for a change. Nice having a forward that can be consistent. Heaney was as solid as it comes, um, 116. He was on 70 at half time, so... Um, a little bit disappointing that he couldn't finish it out that way, but um, I, I just really liked that matchup against Geelong. But just had other guys um, just uh, taking the load out of Isaac Heaney there. Uh, Zorka 95, I thought he would do better against that dog's matchup. Fisher, fantastic. I brought him in at 4.43, been a good trade-in. Uh, seems like he's easily top six, uh, especially with no McKercher or Sheasel. Uh, Dempsey, 50. Uh, now his break even, I believe, is twenty four. So, um, as a guy that is really struggling with money, um, I'm going to be holding on to him for one more week after his buy, um, and then cashing him out round sixteen would be my guess. Fraser fifty three, uh, meh. Um, it will stay in the side for one more week, and then I'll trade him out. Jackson, uh, at the buy, and then Richards is injured, so. Let's go involved. Let's get involved with everyone's favorite part of the video, and that is trade. So what am I thinking? And um, maybe I've lost the plot here because um, there is a guy I think I will be bringing to my side this week, and I'm not. I'm not. Uh, it, 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 basically, how do I describe it? You guys remember when I brought in Ben Keys last year? He, he was all right, but, you know, lost that midfield role, and then it was just bang average. Um. I'm looking to do a similar thing. Um, uh, hopefully just a bit more success rate, but I'm not very confident. But as you can see with my side, I am running out of money. So the thought process here is ideally he is my 23rd premium and he can just cover for any one or two weeks of suspensions, injuries, that sort of thing. So let's talk about it. So close he has to go. He just has to go. I think my um, Supercoach page might need a reload here. Um, and then we're going to get rid of Garcia. I assume he's not going to play, so we'll get rid of him. Finally, uh, unless he is named this week. Now, I was actually going to bring in... Um, uh, sorry, I'll swing. Wait, what am I doing? 
I forgot what I was doing. Yeah, I'm swinging. Sorry, I'm swinging Fisher into there. Now, originally, I was going to go Kruger, but I'm actually starting to think that that could totally bugger up my 23rd primo move because he's a ruck forward and then Richards is here. So it'd be like a ruck forward and a, just a standard forward. You kind of prefer to have a mid forward here if I'm going to have Richards here. So I'm actually starting to think I actually can't get Kruger. So we're going to have... Uh, so I'll, I, I really would recommend if it works with your plans to get Kruger. I do prefer Kruger, but I think we're going to have to get Dowling um, from the Crows. So... That's a bit frustrating, but is what it is. And um, I'm going to get in. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you three seconds for you guys to guess. Three, two, one. Oh, I didn't have my. Okay. Oh, it's slowly appearing. Josh Simpkin. There we go. Yeah. Um, why? I was having a look at some CBAs here. Let's have a look at North CBAs. It, um, I, he had 65% CBAs here. Uh, the main concern would be if Sheasel spends a bit more time in there and power, but I think with the way he played, I think it's pretty hard. Kaiko's sort of been saying um, over the past few weeks, uh, sorry, of like they're really looking to have a more mature midfielder in there. And I mean, what better than your captain to be involved? So... That's the thought process. Um, the idea of him is to be that 23rd guy. Uh, whether it actually works out, no idea. A uh, bit nervous about it. I mean, he's done he's done 90 plus for three years straight in the past. So it's like, I don't know, if you can do 85 for me, that'd be brilliant. But yeah, that I don't know. It's a bit of a pod. It's a bit of a swing for the fences here. But um why not why not i think i'm not in a great position with my side and i think i just got to go with a couple of risks here and just see what we can do this season and uh give it one last shake to get inside that top one percent so let's have a look at the buys and we'll talk about vice captain and captain not set in stone but that's all right uh so first off uh jackson comes into my ruck line and we get in, uh, we we get Max Gorn out of the side. Uh, yep, those three are fine there. Then you're going to get Dowling. Yep, they're all... Oh, wait, hang on. Sorry. You move... How did I do this last time? I'm trying to think. Uh, anyway, Ryan... Hang on, I'll, I'll find a way. But Ryan comes in. I should probably press optimize, but um, I'll show you guys what it's actually looking like. So you've probably got five players playing there in defense. We'll do the mathematics in a sec. Uh, Butters in, on your pop kid. Uh, Simpkin goes to here. And Raul goes on for Sarong. And we'll chuck Richards on because uh, you're better off hoping that a, an injured player that's three weeks away from playing might actually play. So... Uh, so we've got seven buy round players here and one injured in Marty Hall. Let's count up how many players are going to play. So five here. Um, I assume Sullivan and McAuliffe are going to play uh, unless they play silly buggers with us. Uh, so that's five there. Dawson, I highly doubt, will play. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I, I think 20 blokes on field this week is not too bad at all. And I'll have 16 premiums on field because I've probably got less premiums than most when it comes to this round 14 buy. So hopefully I can get a little advantage with that. Best 18. So I'll have four rookies on field and Sullivan, McCall, of Fryger, and um, Dowling. So the idea is hopefully just two of them or two or three of them can score all right, um, not be the sub. So, uh, yeah, so I don't think that's that bad of a situation to be in this week. Next week, if we can just once again get 20 on field, that would be great. So what are we looking at? One, two, three, four, five. I assume Graham will play. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15, 16, 17, 18. So once again, two more trades, trading out two or three blokes with their buy, and um, that will be enough, and we'll 
um, should have 20 next week as well, which I think I've had 20 on field each week. So I feel like that's, I feel like that's pretty good. I must say, having gone under, under 20 uh, with the players in the buy round. So that's good. Vice captain, captain, let's have a look at it. I think it's pretty clear that Zorko is a good target for this week. I mean, he scores terrifically at the Gabba. Um, St Kilda just, as I mean, we've heard this everywhere, but St Kilda do leak a, a lot of points down back. Um, Dogs, Bont, nah, pretty tough, Matt. Uh, pretty tough uh, midfield to crack there. Sorong, I don't mind. Um, form the past couple of weeks hasn't been too great, though. The captain definitely won't be going on, uh, Dogger. Luke Ryan, I don't mind. I think dogs do leak points down back, so I don't mind that. So I'm having a look at Luke Ryan there, especially with all these tags happening in the midfield now. It's just like sort of want to avoid them now because the last thing you want is tagging, uh, is captaining a play with a tag. So Richmond, I mean, I've only got McAuliffe, not exactly going to consider him. Adelaide versus Sydney, um, Dawson, no. Golden, I don't think I trust him as a captain though. And then Heaney, one um Heaney's interesting as well. So it's between Heaney and Ryan there. Dacos, that um that uh cork shin's gonna scare me too much, plus the tag risk. Sheasel's interesting. I don't mind him. Fisher do like uh Fisher maybe with uh Collingwood leaking a lot of points down back. Simpkin, God no. Uh, Tom Green, no way. Butters, uh, no way. I think they're both pretty tough matchups in itself. So I think for me, it could be Ryan into Heaney. It could be Zorko into Ryan. It could be Zorko into Heaney. I think two of those three will get involved this week. So not looking at any midfielders at the minute. Uh, so that's probably the plan with vice captain and captain. Let's go over some of the... Um, Actually, we'll go over the most traded and most traded out players, actually. I actually haven't seen this. I think it's the first time this season where, I, gee, this desperately needs an, an update. I'm going to refresh and just hope it's a bit quicker. Uh, for what it's worth, I do. Th I think I have mentioned this, but I would prefer going a Nathan Kruger over Billy Dowling. I do think, I mean, Kruger is very injury prone, but... Um, I think his scoring's a lot better if on the park. So is everyone trading out closely? Yep, a thousand percent agree. Probably should have traded out with Wilson earlier, but that's an absolute must. I mean, his break even's got to be skyrocketed. Yep. 137. Please trade him out if you do have him still. Uh Will Graham, that that's fine. I think I'll hold him for one more week. Uh Combin, what's his break even? 93. Yep, time to go for him. Garcia, perfectly fine. I think it's just about dead. Sweet. No issues there. Sullivan, I mean, he's playing north, so I'd give it another week. Don't know what the status is on Petrarca with his uh, um, bruised, uh, what is it, like cracked ribs. So I don't think they're broken. I think they said cracked or something. So, um, yeah, uh, it depends how, wait for the injury report on Petrarca. Oliver, I think, is perfectly fine. I think he's as fake as it comes as a primo. Same with Tom Stewart. So I have no issues with both of them as well, if you're in the correct position to be doing luxuries. Yeah, I think I'm going Dowling over Kruger. I do prefer Kruger, though, for what that's worth. So if that works with your uh, with your end of team structure, I would go Kruger. But Dowling's no mug either. Golden, um, yep. I mean... Yeah, this has Jordan Dawson written all over it, like back in round seven, where people paying just a little bit overs now for him, but uh, not overs, sorry, but just grabbing him after his first price rise. But 560k is still good value for Gould, and I think he can, with how bad some of these midfield primos are, I think he can give the top eight a bit of a shake. Yeah, get in Fisher if you don't, please. Grab him. Um. Ryan, uh, what's his break even now? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, if you can afford it, then do it. But it's a lot of money to be spending up this time of year. Uh, but if your cash is looking good, I have no issues. Lucky Neil, I, th I don't know. I just think paying up for these guys is just, I don't know. I'd probably prefer saving the 
70, 80 K and going golden over Neil. But for what it's worth, I think Neil's definitely top eight. So if you're looking for that, then go for it. Jordan Clark's interesting. Um, I think he is top six at the end of the day. I'm not going to be able to afford him, but I would jump on him. Zorko, I mean, I I know I know he's got that St. Kilda matchup. I think he might just have to bite uh just bite that and um just just wear it and just cop it because are you really gonna bring in a play out for nearly six hundred K with a one eighty seven break even? Don't think that's the best of ideas. I'll just wait another week. Um, Sarong, I uh, once again, like it's one seventy six break even. I think I'll just wait. Um, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be going with this. Um, with these high break even guys. But is at six thirty. Um, once again, I think you can wait another week. Like Giants are a tough matchup. I I can understand. Uh, if you just want to get them in now, but I don't know. So yeah, and then we'll just have a quick look at some of the leagues. Oh, and also, if you got uh, Zach Merritt this week, I think he's a very good option against the Eagles. All right, let's have a look at um, some of the leagues. So the SDS Super League lost by 19 points from uh, AFL young gun Anthony Caminiti. So shout out to him for joining the league, and he's having a fantastic year in Supercoach as well. So just lost to him by 19 points. Uh Nearly. Uh, he did captain Dacos, so if he did captain Gorn, he would have absolutely smashed me. But uh, just, yeah, a few too many bad scores here from me to uh, compete there. And then um, the SDS Times Pro League uh, defeated Graham, inverted banana, 14th. So, uh, GG, mate, uh, as we have a look at the ladder of a couple of these leagues and where they're ranked. The SDS Super, Super League ranked 48th out of Nearly 14,000 leagues, so I'm extremely stoked with that. Great job for everyone being a part of this league. It's been good fun, so I'm just hoping I can make top eight because, I mean, the way I'm going, I don't really deserve it, but hopefully I can sneak into the top eight. I've gone back-to-back -back in the leagues and uh, might just be a bit of a premiership hangover um, after the back-to-back -back there in my league this year. And then the SDS Times Pro League is, um, yeah, the league ranking's a lot worse because... Uh, we are, um, yeah, just uh, just a few guys down here that um, a few of my mates here who have just given up here. So that's my fault, Brad. As I say every week, but um, I'm five and zero in it uh, over the last five games. So that's good. Um, that league's going over pretty good. Let's go over some of my other leagues, shall we? I know I don't show you guys some of these leagues, but the SDS TikTok League, yes, I do have TikTok, SDS underscore Supercoach. So this is where I'm sitting currently in third. This is the league I take the most serious, this uh, uh, this mate's league. So currently in fourth there. Uh, league ranking not good, but got a few of the boys in there. SDS Twitter League. Now, shout out to this Twitter League because I need to say, like, we are ranked 19th out of all 20-man leagues. So that's pretty crazy to think, and that sort of sums up how good this league's going because, yeah, I'm 15th. Um, so, yeah, struggling than that. Probably won't make finals in that, along with a lot of my leagues. Now, how's um Jimmy's Doodle team going? Okay, so he was around top 100, but he has hit back a bit more this week, um, going up 16 spots. So best of luck to him. Also, Geelong Strong, I know he had a disappointing week this week, but um, I know you'll bounce back, mate, so keep at it. Um, yeah, this league's fantastic. I mean, it, it's crazy to think that 15 out of 20 people in this league are inside the top 10K. Like, that's just mental. So, well done, SDS Twitter League. Got a little money league going there. I'm currently fourth. Do I like my chances? I don't know. It'll be a bit of a mixture. I do hope I can win the money league. I was robbed last year. Uh, the Scottfather League. So um, this is the league that Abs does promote every week. Um, not doing too good. I do feel like I, I'm doing. I do feel like I should be doing a lot better in this league though. Like ranked 14th in points scored. I've got. I mean, not. Ex don't get me wrong. Like definitely not top eight, but. 14th in overall in the in the league. Um, also, another way to look at points is looking at points against. I've had the third most points against me in my matchups. 
But the main highlight is where we are ranked second out of all leagues, um, 20 man leagues. So that is crazy. If we can get to number one, that'd be unreal. Yeah, just just all the content creators here just shows the great minds of so many people. Like, um, yeah, I'm just struggling here. So I feel feel like I'm letting the squad down. But um, yeah, it's been a bloody tough league, I must say. Um, a lot tougher than some of my leagues last year. So um, no, nah, it's an honor to be in it. I'm not sure if I'll get invited back next year, but the way I'm going, but um, no, nah, it's been a good league. The DR content league, I'm 18th in that as well, but we're ranked 13th there. The Podmaster seed one league, uh, 17th there, but 24th in rank there. The Spills uh, SA Premier League, uh, 13th here, doing a bit better, ranked 45th there. The Shorty League, 102nd league ranking, and I'm currently 14th there. And the Season 2K24 League, I am top of the table for a change. So basically what it looks like, looks like I'll make finals in the 2K24 League, the Money League, which is very important. I hope I can keep it going there. The TikTok League. The SDS Times Pro League, maybe the SDS Super League, and then this league right here, um, my mates league. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going as well as I usually do in leagues this year, just due to my poorish season. I don't think there's really much else to talk about. I mean, um, I've got to be up in about, I've got to be up in less than five hours, so I've got to wrap this up and sort it out. So, uh, I don't think there's too much else to report here. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys. Had a good week in Supercoach, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Leave any comments down below as well. Uh, sorry, I've been slack on them this year. Cheers.